this tutorial, I'm going to share with you um, a little bit about drop spindling. I haven't been doing a whole lot of drop spindling lately because I have two spinning wheels as well as an e-spinner. And so I am much more productive and can do a lot more spinning a lot faster on those wheels and I haven't really spent time spinning on my spindles as of late. That's not to say that I won't get back to spinning on my spindles, but right now it's not a top priority. But I do want to give you just a few tips on how to spin on a spindle. First of all, I want to show you two different weights of spindle. The weight of a spindle will vary dramatically. You could have a two ounce spindle, which is what this one is, is approximately two ounces. This is the spindle that I first learned on. However, the heavier the spindle, the heavier weight of the yarn that you will get. And for me personally, when I started spinning, I wanted to spin fingering to possibly DK sport weight yarn. So, spinning on something like this was not going to be good for me long term because in order to get a fingering weight yarn, you need to have a fairly thin single, especially if you're going to three or four ply it. So this was great to learn on temporarily for me, but it wasn't a long term, um, a long term spindle for me. This one, which is the little brother of this one, is a one ounce spindle. And still, even this one is a little bit heavy for what I like to do. Um, but it is much better than the heavier version. And you will be able to get a much lighter weight yarn with the one ounce spindle. Now, the most of the spindles that I use when I do spin on my spindle are less than an ounce. They are usually about no more than 17 grams, I think is the highest that I have, is a 17 gram spindle. So I'm just going to um, show you a little bit about how to, to get your spinning started. So you will see that I have a leader on my um, spindle here. Now, when I spin, I don't usually have a leader. I just make a leader with my fiber. Um, it takes a little bit more time to do that, um, and it does take a little bit more practice. So if you are new to spindle spinning, then it's probably best to just put the leader on. Um, and all you're going to do is create a, a slip knot and then put it on. And I've also tied the end on this one. So to get it started, you're just going to have a piece of fiber and you can just put it kind of in that little crease and then you're going to want to make sure that your fiber is, is out of the way and not going to interact with the spinning. Now, we talked in the previous video about S-twist and Z-twist. In this case, I want to spin this single in a Z-twist so that when I ply it, I can ply it in an S-twist. So a Z-twist is uh, clockwise. So I'm going to rotate, I'm going to flick my, my um, spindle so that it's spinning in a clockwise direction if I was looking down on the spindle. So I'm just going to flick it and I'm going to hold it and I'm going to allow that twist to come up in there. Now, when you're new to spinning, the easiest way to start spinning is the park and draft method. I, if you spin it and get a good amount of twist in there and then you're going to put it down between your legs. Now I've got it between my legs, you can't see that part, but if you saw that part you wouldn't be able to see what's going on up here, which is the important thing that's happening right now. Once you have that twist, you can start moving your hand up and allow that twist to go into the yarn. Okay? And you allow the twist to go right up into the yarn. Into, I'm sorry, into the fiber. 
once all the twist is out, or most of the twist, and you don't feel like there's any more twist going up there, then you need to spin the spindle again and allow more twist into that, and then place the spindle between your legs, between your knees, and then draft out oops, some more fiber to go up in there. Okay, so once you have a good bit of length on your of uh, fiber, or in this case it's part liter, then you're going to want to take it out of the hook and you're going to want to spin it and create what I think is called a cop, but I'm not really quite sure, but you're just going to spin it on there so it will start winding on to the, the spindle. When you get down to have just a little bit left, actually probably want a little bit more than that, because you're going to allow that twist to come up in there. You're going to spin it, allow the twist to build up, put it between your knees, and then draft out and allow it to go up in there. Draft it out, and draft it out. And then spin it, allow some twist to get in there, place it between your knees, and then draft it out a little bit, draft it out a little bit more, and then allow that twist to run up in to the, um, the fiber that you've drafted out. Again, once you have a bit of a length on there, you're going to wind it onto your spindle, leaving, again, a, a decent sized length so that you can spin it and allow that twist to come in. Oops. That happens. That's what they're called drop spindles. <laughs> I didn't quite get it on my hook before I started spinning. So you, you're, you're letting it get into that hook there. That's how it's, it's staying on the top. So you're going... <laughs> okay, let's try again. Maybe I need to go the, the other direction. So come around this way. And again, you might have to determine different spindles do different things. Sometimes I wrap it one way around the hook and sometimes I wrap it around the other because one way is better than the other. So then... Give it a good quick spin, a twist, let the twist get up into the fiber or the yarn uh, up into your leader here and then draft it out. I'm going to spin it again and I'm going to draft it out. Now you will notice that I am kind of untwisting my fiber. If you give me a moment, I'm going to reset up so that you can be looking kind of at me over my shoulder so you can kind of see a little better of how I am spinning this and how I am drafting this fiber. Okay, so now hopefully you can see a little bit better of how I'm spinning this. I'm going to go ahead and allow the twist to come up into the leader that I have here. And when I go to spin this, or when I go to draft it, before I pull on the, um, the fiber, I'm going to kind of give it a little untwist to kind of loosen up the fibers that are right there next to that fiber, that um, so fiber supply. Untwist, and then draft. Untwist, and then draft. This will help you to get a more even um, single. So let me show you again. I'm going to spin it, and then I'm going to place it between my legs. And again, I'm going to untwist a little bit. So my, my twist is going this way around, um, this way around my, my fiber. So I'm, in order to untwist it, I'm just going to untwist it and then pull it out. And untwist it and pull it out. And again, that's going to help you to get a, a more consistent single. So again, I'm going to wind it on and then leave a bit and 
spin, allow it to go up in there, into the leader, place it between my legs, and then untwist and draft, untwist and draft, untwist and draft. This hand here is just kind of feeding the fiber. It's, I'm not really clipping it. The only time I am really squeezing this fiber is when I'm holding it so that I can spin it. That's the only time that this hand is um, squeezing that fiber. So again, untwist and draft. Untwist and draft. And this um, is somewhat of a, what I'm doing with this, how I'm drafting this, is somewhat of a woolen spinning method because I'm allowing the air to get into the fiber supply as I'm spinning it. So I'm, when, I, when I let go like that, yeah, let me try again because the spindle is a little down. But when I let go after I've um, let the twist come up, that's allowing some of that air to get in there. Um, if it was a worsted spun, there would be no air. I would have this hand down further and would not be allowing the twist to get up into the fiber supply. The twist will only be in the drafted section. And technically, just by letting it go, it's, it's considered a woolen. Now, if I were to go twist and slide it up, and then draft and slide it up, that is more of a um, worsted spinning um, method. And it's a little bit more difficult to do that method on a drop spindle. When we get to spinning on a wheel, I will show you how it's done on the wheel. But now, once you have mastered the technique of spin, of what they call park and draft, where you spin and let the twist come up into the fiber and the parking it between your knees, once you get past that, then you can go ahead and spin and draft at the same time. So I'm going to spin it, let the bobbin or the uh, spindle just kind of hang and continue spinning, and I will just continue drafting until I see that the bob or the spindle is slowing down and then once it's slowing down I will stop and I will wind on my yarn. <clears throat> Again I will show you that. I will give my spindle a quick spin and then go ahead and let it continue spinning while I draft it out. And again the, the woolen method of spinning is the easiest when you're spinning on a drop spindle. And then when I see that the spindle is slowing down, I will go ahead and wind it on and then continue. So thanks for joining me for this spinning on a drop spindle tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you will come back and check out more spinning tutorials that I have for you. Thanks for watching.